It's Wednesday morning, November 2nd. I stayed in a hotel here at the airport, Narita Airport. Uh, now I'm taking a high-speed rail train from the airport into Tokyo for a meeting and some uh, limited sightseeing. One of the things that first strikes you when you reach Japan is that they're still recovering from the phenomenally destructive tsunami which hit the country months ago. Uh, there was a tremendous loss of life and a tremendous destruction of, uh, of property. One of the biggest concerns happens to be the Fukushima nuclear power plant, which was disabled by the tsunami and is still emitting radioactive waste, etc. There's tremendous concern in this country about how to handle Fukushima and as to what is really going on there. We're now heading from uh, Narita to uh, Tokyo. It should take about 35 or 40 minutes. Give you an idea of the scope of the disaster and the danger related to the uh, meltdown of the Fukushima nuclear power plant and the subsequent radiation leaks. I've included uh, in this video a CNN interview with Mishu Kaku, uh, who was an expert on the subject area. Uh, I hope you enjoy it while you take a look at the scenery uh, going from Narita to Tokyo. of the situation at the site? No. It's still a ticking time bomb. Realize that after the big Sumatra tsunami, uh, 90 days after, three months after that, there was a huge aftershock. If they have another aftershock, and they're not in cold shutdown yet till next year, the accident could start all over again. It's like hanging by your fingernails. Yeah, it's stable, but you're hanging by your fingernails. Americans think this crisis is over, or that some even think that maybe it's solved or it's contained. It's, it's not. We're, what's happening right now? In the last two weeks, everything we knew about that accident has been turned upside down. We were told three partial meltdowns, don't worry about it. Now we know it was 100% core melt in all three reactors. Radiation, minimal, that was released. Now we know it was comparable to the radiation at Chernobyl. And as far as evacuation, yeah, 12 miles, that's it. You don't have to evacuate beyond 12 miles. Now they find hot spots, four hot spots outside the evacuation zone. 34,000 school children now have radiation badges when they go to school. Kindergartners with radiation now to badges. Four years of age. Can you imagine that? Kindergarten kids with radiation badges going to school. So all the mythology of the accident has been turned upside down because utility has finally fessed up to how severe this accident really was. In your view, did they not know how bad it was, or they knew? and they didn't tell, or they just were completely blown away by the scope of the disaster. I'm a physicist, and we tried to reconstruct the accident in our computers, given the feeble amount of information they gave us. We knew it was much more severe than they were saying, because radiation was coming out left and right. So, in other words, they lied to us. They knew how much radiation was coming out. They knew the danger. They knew how much core melting was taking place. But they tried to put a happy face on it. As a reporter, within hours of the earthquake and tsunami, within hours, not even a day, there were already statements from the company and from the International Atomic Energy uh, Association saying that there had been safe shutdown of all of the reactors. And we know, of course, in the end, that, that simply wasn't true. But from the very beginning, they were trying to tell us this was a safe situation. Within hours of the accident, we now know it was like the Keystone Cops. People that are clueless, headless, just running around crazy, not knowing what to do. We can now reconstruct that accident minute by minute, hour by hour, and we can see this chaos that erupted in the leadership of the utility. What's happening to the people who are working there now? Well, as you know, workers are being sent in, and they're getting, uh, you know, like a year's dose of radiation just within like 10 minutes at a time. At Chernobyl, 600,000 workers had to be mobilized, each one going in just for a few minutes, each one getting a medal from Gorbachev. This will be the 100-year cleanup. How, how long will it take to clean this up, in your view? 50 to 100 years. And we're not there yet. We're not to the point of talking about the cleanup yet because they haven't stopped the reaction. It's, it's still happening. The cleanup hasn't even started yet. They're not in coal shutdown till next year. Coal shutdown is when boiling stops. Right. There's boiling water right there at the reactor, releasing radiation into the environment and releasing radiation into gigantic vats.
How are they storing and disposing of this stuff? That's the killer, because you have all these fats that are filling up now. They may have to dump it into the ocean again. At that point, the Chinese, the Koreans, the fishermen, they get up all in arms because there's so much damage. Every time you put water in, it leaks right out again, highly radioactive, and it's filling up at the site now. So what, what do they do with it? Right now, they're just uh, counting the number of gallons as they pile up, desperately trying to bring more vats in. But uh, and once they saturate, they're going to have to dump. And at that point, it's another crisis. Let's talk about the radiation in the environment, in the atmosphere. We've been told that it would be measurable but minuscule amounts on the U.S. West Coast, around the world. Is that true? It's still minimal around the world. Most of the damage is concentrated within 20 miles, 50 miles of the reactor accident inside. That's where we have the hot spots. That's where we have 20 times normal amount of radiation in schoolyards outside the evacuation zone. But in New York City, you can actually see it in the milk. You can actually see that iodine-131 actually spiked a little bit in our milk in New York City, but it's very small. Just even hearing that, though, I mean, even hearing that you can detect it, that there's a, a catastrophe that is wor the worst catastrophe, industrial catastrophe in history, that we can see it in milk in New York, and that's frightening. That's right. This could be the granddaddy of all industrial accidents, topping Chernobyl at 200 billion, topping the Gulf oil spill at about 15 billion, topping the Challenger Columbia disasters in space at about 10 billion. This could be the, the world's record holder for an industrial accident.